Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on my 99 Twin Turbo Dakota RT. Um, today we're going to be playing with the exhaust. I'll include a clip of my last drive where I did an exhaust back pressure test with the chambered, they're not flow masters, they're thrush welded, flow master knockoff. The, uh, so I'll include the video of the back pressure test on the highway. I don't know what good or bad is. And I don't know how much power it's going to be worth on a dyno. I do plan on swapping mufflers on the dyno just to see for curiosity. But I've got some other mufflers we're going to put in place. So I'm going to get to that after that clip. And uh, slap it back together. And we're going to go do a highway test again. And see if that pressure drops. So I don't know if it's going to be enough. But I also don't want my truck like straight pipe loud. So let's get to it and show you what I got. exhaust so it's not too complicated it's got to be offset in offset out for where it, the exhaust goes over the frame and out the bedside so it was kind of hard to get a cheap muffler to replace this I mean even though that is a cheap muffler a cheap straight through muffler but I found them um, Amazon's got these really cheap flow shine or some flow FX mufflers but they didn't have offset in offset out I would have preferred that because dime a dozen and I've used them before it definitely changes the uh, I think the flow master is actually louder you would think the muffler that you could see through would be louder than the chambered muffler but it's uh, a lot deeper but less pingy so I, I guess it, it just drops the pitch that much it doesn't seem as loud well anyway that's what I got Borla's, I think they were $111, $115 a piece off Summit. Summit had their own perforated tube, whatever they said, straight through, and I didn't want a chance. They had their own, it was $98 for a Summit brand or $111 for the Borla's, so we got Borla's. No one else had a uh, offset in, offset out in that style. So these are 13 inches. Well, you can actually see where this thing backfired once. I don't know if you can see it very well. You can see you got a gap. Got a gap and they're touching in the middle. They uh, they ballooned out there a bit. So I'd say another reason for getting rid of these. If we ever do a two-step or whatever, it backfires again. It's trying to blow the, the mufflers up. So we don't want that. So these are 13 inches. These are 14 inches. I never fully welded this. So I'm hoping I can just cut my welds. The plan was to get it tacked on there and then one day take it off and finish welding it. And never did that. So that might help because there's nothing from here to here welded. Nothing from here to here. It's just these stitches you can see on, on the bottom. So I should be able to cut that and wiggle those out hopefully. Maybe. It looks like I welded up this seam a bit too. That's going to bite me maybe. No, there's no seam there. That's just crap. That's just where the water condensation's coming out. Uh, it being 14 inches, an inch longer, helps because I don't have to play right here. I can just cut it right past the weld or right before the weld and grind it off. I'll cut right past because I've got that extra inch. And then I've got to make <clears throat> or cut this one off. The other rubber still on the truck. These hang right in the factory muffler hanger or the factory exhaust hanger. So I've either got to cut this off or go find another one. It's like a 7 16 rod. I may go to the Home Depot or somewhere and see if I can find that. And see, I never actually finished this because I had to TIG weld it on the truck where I couldn't get to it. And the cross member that was permanent in there was bratted in, wouldn't allow you to get the exhaust out. But I've cut the brads off. Now I can get the exhaust in and out. And these are Dynamax bullet mufflers for tips. This didn't help a ton, but it did before I put the turbos on it. Um, the turbos did the most quieting out of everything, I believe. But I like the way it looks. I like that it gives it just a little more. I never finished welding it either. So we might 
get everything mocked up, take it back off, and actually finish well if I have enough filler rod. There's always something. I always forget something. So I'm not going to get too crazy with this. I'm just going to put you on a stand and time lapse this thing, get to cutting, and uh, I'll get this thing tied back together. Probably go to the store first. So I think if I bridge them first, like that, and keep everything nice and straight, that will be the easiest. I did make some hangers for the exhaust up front, because it used to just, the only thing it was hanging from was that and the downpipes. So now it's got hangers on the transmission cross member too. So if I get hangers on those mufflers, which the offset is the same, pipe to pipe, so if I bridge it just like I did there, I can put the the mount right where it was on those mufflers, on these mufflers, stick it in the truck, get everything kind of mocked up where it's going to go and start tacking things. I hope. Right, I'm going to get to it. got the original pipes from the crossover ready mufflers of course are new they're ready I'll clean that up a bit but it's pretty much ready to go back on I'm gonna use the crossover bar that I was using for the hanger right there so I gotta clean it up and I will attach it to these mufflers first and then kind of hang them in there but this is what we had before so it's basically got a wall with a hole in the center there's a V and then a wall with a hole in the center and these ones just straight through perforated tube so I would think these would have to flow better but the gauge will tell us I know they sound different I think I like it but I'm gonna get to it and start fitting this up <laughs> all right it's uh, ready it's welded enough. I will take it off and weld it with a MIG welder at work. I really need to get a MIG welder at home. Um, I could TIG weld all of it, but TIG welding aluminized crap to stainless crap, it, it's a pain. It's just not worth doing. So, MIG welder it is. I didn't record me building a lot of it, because it's a real pain in the butt to do with a truck this close to your face. And to get a decent shot. <clears throat> so... Got my mounts up here. My X pipe was pre existing. These are the pipes off the old mufflers. There's the new mufflers. They actually weigh surprisingly less than those uh, thrush mufflers, which I'm excited about. Less weight, more better. And here's the back side. Planner in between a dry shaft. These just welded enough to be good enough. And back out the side. Alright, we've had some complications. Mufflers are on. Um, I was trying to show everything the way it was and but my battery is dying in the gopro and it won't charge anymore so right now you're on a cord we got about that much cord we unplug it it dies so i'll order some batteries soon but we'll hear it a little bit it's quieter and i haven't been able to go down the road with the camera watching it i may try it with my phone no i'm not i went to the pull apart to look for some stuff for my civic 
and buddy Jeff rode with me, so he was watching the back pressure gauge, and with the new mufflers, we barely got to 1.5 at the top end. So that's way better than four, or three and a half four. And it's quieter. I really need to actually tighten up the battery lugs. But we're gonna be moving it soon. It's like quiet, quiet. I don't know how it sounds on the camera. But I quite enjoy it. Uh, that's as far as our cord reaches. And it looks way better finally sitting on the ground with the drag radials. learned on this one we just replaced some mufflers but I'm glad to see the back pressure down of course we won't know what that did until we get to the dyno I've still got to knock the rest of the pipes out of these where I just cut it off so that when we're on the dyno I think it's worth checking out I mean everyone knows you don't put chamber mufflers on your turbo car and we know it had about three and a half to four psi back pressure had about seven pounds seven seven and a half pounds of boost and now we have one to one and a half pounds of back pressure with straight through mufflers, I'd really like to see what the gain is. Because everyone always talks about, well, back pressure's bad. This, of course it is. But, like, but how bad? So, I hope to find out. Um, that's probably going to be... I think we're going to do another dyno day in a month, sometime in January. So, I'll try to have it ready to do that. Wideband's dead again. Those stupid O2 sensors, this truck just eats them. So I can't dial it in anymore. I gotta play around with that. I did actually take the time to put my center console in. And to put the LC2 is inside of it. It's inside going through the floor. I left the serial cable hanging out for when I need the data log and my transmission lock up and uh, the overdrive solenoid wire switch still hanging out there. And that's just how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna take the time to actually mount switches. to actually mount switches into the center console. This just is what it is. And it doesn't say it's charging anymore. It's gonna die any second. All right, anyway, so that's my plans. I wired in the LC2 to the GFB boost controller so it'll read AFR, but it's not reading. It was once and now it won't do it again. So I gotta pull the O2 sensor out, recalibrate it, and see if that fixes it. But usually, once O2 sensor is dead, it's it's over. I don't know if it's a moisture thing, a heat thing. They're so far away from the turbo. I don't think it'd be a heat thing, but it's something. Um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do next. I really gotta get the five lug swap for the front. I might start working on that. I'm looking at borrowing some scales from a friend to see just how nose heavy this thing is. It actually hooks pretty good with those tires. It did dry up yesterday, today's Sunday. It dried up about 1, 2 o'clock on Saturday. First gear still blows the tires off, which is kind of expected. Second gear, it hooks. If you if it's spinning in first and you shift the second, it'll keep spinning if you stay in it. But if, if you go from first, let off in the second, you can just romp right back into it and it'll hook. So I'm pretty happy about that. It's nice to feel the thing actually pull and not just blow the tires off in second. And third, no question, even in the rain. Like I drove back home in the rain and today I drove to the parts store a couple times. I can get, I can actually accelerate harder with these tires in the rain than I could with the regular street tires. Anyway, it is what it is. I'll try to give you guys an update. I'm still working on it. Um, I really think the Holly's gonna be the biggest step up 
is this wideband crapping out? Now the Holly's going to use a wideband too. But they don't seem to die as quickly as these aftermarket ones. Even from Bosch with the aftermarket controller, the Holly ones seem to last longer. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but I'll figure it out. Anyway, if you made it through this launch spiel, thank you for watching. And if you're new, please like and subscribe. I'm always working on stuff.